Hello and welcome to another video tutorial for Vast Light. In this tutorial I want to explain the drawing properties window which you can see over here. This should appear as soon as you go to paint mode. So I have loaded up the Casturi 11 Eurodata dataset which you can find in the supplementary package and I click this little pen icon so that I switch to paint mode. So the drawing properties window contains most of the options that control what you're painting and how it's being painted. So let's go through these different options. So first of all, here you have the pen diameter in pixels. If I change my diameter of the pen, you can see that this is updated over here. You can also enter a value here. For example, you want to have a pen that is exactly 16 pixels in size, then this value will change and uh, your pen size will change accordingly. So now if you want to force yourself to always be at 16 pixels, you can lock the pen size by enabling this function. Now if you change the size of the pen and then release, you will see that it will always jump back to 16 pixels. Next up we have the fill mode, which I explained in an earlier window. If this is enabled, anything that you draw as a completely enclosed region will fill automatically. If you disable that, it will not do that. Next up we have the different modes for painting. Right now we are in background mode, which means that <coughs> you can only paint on pixels which are not painted yet. So for example, if I paint in red over here, you will see that all the objects that have previously been painted are protected from paint being painted over. Same happens if you erase. You will only erase pixels which are of the same color as the one that you have selected right now because you are in background mode and it will change them back to empty or background. If you switch this to paint all instead, you will see that now I'm painting over anything that has already been painted. And if I erase, everything will be er erased <coughs> no matter what the color is. So I recommend that for a normal painting, you should be in background mode to protect whatever other objects you painted. Just let me correct this. I pick this color by holding down shift. I fill and I <coughs> um, repair these objects that I just erased. So as you can see, by using shift and picking, you can very quickly switch which color you're painting and correct several objects. Let's fill this one and this one. Or actually, let's erase this one or this one. So there's a very quick workflow that is enabled by using background mode. Uh, and paint all mode is useful if you want to erase several objects in a region that have different colors and you want, don't want to go through each one. The third option here, parent mode, has something to do with the hierarchies of segments in the segment list. So these segments are currently just listed as a single list, but you can actually move them around. So if you pick one, and you drag it, you can see you can change its position here. And if you drag it further to the right, you can see it changes from a line to highlighting the um, segment next to it. And then if you release, actually let's try that again. Then if you release, it will become a child of that segment. So I can move these objects now into this folder as a child. I can make one a child of another child and you can collapse and expand these. So if you put, let's say, everything we painted in, in one segment here and then you collapse it, it will all appear as red because the folder color is red. So a collapsed folder will appear as its folder color and if it's opened it will appear in the same way that these folders appear. So you can easily generate groups here and if you group something then you can collapse the folder into a single object and it will appear as a single object. You can also rename these objects. For example, you can name this neurons. And now you have a group of neurons that contains different elements. So now the parent mode that I just talked about relates to these, this child parent relationship. So the color on which you can paint will always be the direct parent of the color that is selected. So for example, if I select orange, which is the direct child of red. Now I can paint only on red, not on the background or any other color, only on red I can paint. And if I erase, 
the current paint color will be changed back to its immediate parent, which is the red color. So this allows you to quickly relabel objects that you previously painted in a different color or to restrict your current painting to a particular region by just arranging your segments in a hierarchy as I demonstrated here. This parent mode is not um, very useful often. I use it sometimes, for example, if I painted a spiny dendrite in one color and now I want to have, to, want to have all spines separate. I can just overpaint each spine with a separate color that I just list as um, a set of children of the main object, which would then still be the main shaft of the dendrite. So that's one way to, of using this. But typically for painting um, segmentations, I usually stay in background mode. This is just protecting everything that you don't want to paint um, and restricting your painting only to background. Next up here we have this restrict mode which I explained in an earlier video. This allows you to constrain yourself to paint at a particular MIP level. So maybe remember that VAST allows for multi-scale painting and you will always paint at the resolution that you are currently displaying. So I am at MIP level 0 means that I am painting at full resolution. If you want to force yourself to only paint at full resolution you can enable this here. And if you zoom out by, for example, using the mouse wheel, painting will be disabled. Next up, we have max paint depth. So this relates to interpolating between several sections if you want to paint an object through several um, sections in your data set. So right now this is set to zero, which means that if I paint somewhere, this will only be painted in the particular section that you're currently viewing and not in an additional section. So if I go to an, the next section here by pressing the up and down key or A and Z key, you can see nothing was painted. But if you set this to, for, let's say for example, plus minus four, it will look for pixels with the same color that you're currently painting in the sections up to four before and after the one that you are painting and then fill in vertically any pixel that is between a color that is already painted and the one that you are currently painting. So let's demonstrate this. So let's say I pick this color and I want to paint this further down. I got on one, two, three, four sections and now I'm painting this here. What will implicitly happen is that the same region that I'm painting um, will be painted in voxels or pixels above until the um, section that I painted it before. So let's go back. One, two, three, four. So you'll see it will paint only the region which is overlapping between section number four, so slice number four, and slice number zero that I painted previously. So this allows you for quickly painting through depth um, in a rough way. So it doesn't really have any knowledge about where the edge is really located. It just uses the overlap between the painted regions um, in, in the first section that I painted and the fourth section that I painted. So you can combine this with um, stepping at a distance of four to very quickly go through a, an object for longer distances. And for this you can not, instead of using the A and Z or up and down keys, you can use the SX key or the page up page down keys will, which will step in steps of four or whatever is set in the max paint depth value. So for example, right now we are in section zero, slice zero. And if I click page down, I go to slice four. Then I click page down again, now I'm in slice eight. So if I pick this color and I paint it in slice zero and four, now we go to slice eight and paint it there. Then we go to slice 12 and paint it there. Then we go to slice 16 and paint it there. Now if I go back, you can see that it filled in all the intermediates, not in a perfect way, as I said earlier, just by using the overlap. But at least if you wanted to have a rough tracing, you can go four times faster because you have to only paint every fourth section. You can set this over here to plus minus eight, which speeds it up even more. And then if you want to later correct it, you can just go back and do corrections um, for the parts of the object that are really off or further away from where you want it than whatever accuracy you're aiming for. 
and like this um, if you just correct it where you really want to correct it you can also speed up your process so this is the max pane depth mode I'm going to set this back to zero here next step is Z scrolling during paint stroke so if you enable this you can actually go forward and backward while you're painting so normally this is not enabled because you don't want to have people paint on a section that they don't want to paint on so let's try this um, for example <coughs> what do we pick let's say this one so let's say you want to quickly go through this object in depth and just skeletonize it basically so you put down your pen and you hold it down and now you scroll through and while you're scrolling through you're moving the mouse now if I move back you can see that it painted your pen in every section and generated kind of a skeleton like object very quickly as well so that's another way you can use um, painting to actually do a skeletonization like segmentation in a very quick way um, below this we have conditional painting and I think I should explain that in a different video because that is a whole topic by itself um, so thanks for watching and see you in the next video